What's going on, everybody? My name is Ben, and welcome back to the bench for a brand new series here on Ben Builds. That's right, guys. We are back with something a little different, but also kind of the same. We're going to go ahead and start a new series today that I like to call One and Done. It's something very similar to what I do on my 12 Sprues of Kitness video series. We're talking one model kit built over one episode at least for you guys. For me, it'll be a couple of weeks, but I'm going to lump everything together in one episode, release it all to you guys here on the channel, and hopefully you guys enjoy it. So from start to finish, one episode, one model, one and done. So let's go ahead and check out our candidate for today. This is the Soviet MiG-3 early version by Trumpeter. And I got to tell you, this is one of my favorite Russian aircraft of World War II. There's something about the MiG-3 that just looks like a thoroughbred. I really enjoy the design. Even though it wasn't the best fighter there in the Russian front, it was still one of the most modern designs that they had at the time. So I thought we'd go ahead and jump in here, check out some of the parts. This is very much a trumpeter kit. We've got multiple poly bags. Parts look very well detailed, but I got to tell you, there's going to be a couple of fit issues here and there. Single decal sheet, not a whole lot of decals to be honest. As you can see, we are given three different schemes that we can paint. We have white 17, which is the one I'm going to be building. We've got a whitewashed version and we have the white 5 down here at the bottom with that really cool yellow spinner. Now, I don't really want to build this one. This is something that I built 132nd scale years ago. I'm not really into the whitewashed camo. So we're going to go ahead and do this white 17. And this is going to be kind of fun because it's early war. So we don't have to go crazy with the weathering. And it's got some potential for some interesting color shifts because of the material that the MIG was made from. Taking a look at the instructions, they're very typical for Trumpeter. We've got our part breakdowns right here in the front. We start out in the cockpit and we have all our sub-assemblies. The detailing here on the MIG is actually pretty decent, but I'll get into the parts a little bit later. So you can see a very simple construction, not really much to this particular model. We've got a couple of areas that might have a little bit of a fit problem, like around the cowling and the wing roots. But other than that, it looks pretty easy. It doesn't have a lot of options, so it should be pretty simple. You'll notice that we do have the abilities to add in these underwing rockets. I won't be adding those in. I want to do a pure fighter version of this, so we'll be leaving those off. Maybe someday I'll go ahead and put those on, but for this one, we're going to leave them off. And you can see we've got the last little step here for our propeller our tail planes, and our canopy. So not really that bad. Checking out the parts, you can see we've got some excellently molded in details. And from what I can tell, it's actually pretty accurate. Not perfect, mind you, but it'll get the job done. The main issue is probably the cockpit floor and only because it's got some areas that are a little bit off, such as this section right here is actually on the real aircraft, completely open. It's just tube steel to go ahead and support the chair. And that's not exactly correct. I'll have to see what I can do with that. I don't want to go too crazy with it, but there are a couple options for sure. Otherwise, though, we have some very nice looking detail here with different dials and gauges and clusters and all that good stuff. So I'm very happy about that. And we have our radio platform right here that actually sits behind the pilot seat. Now, speaking of the seat, this one actually doesn't have any openings for seatbelts. So we'll have to drill out some and then we can make our own seatbelts and drop them on inside. So that's going to be a plan. But everything else looks to be pretty easy. And we might have to do a little bit of work on the seat pan. The rudder pedals might need some straps around it to add a little bit of interest there. And then the last thing is the instrument panel, which I got to say is probably another area that's going to be a little bit troublesome. As you can see, we have very shallow details on any of the gauges, but we have very prominent details on some switches. So I got to look at that, compare it with my references and see what we can do. Maybe we can drill them out or do something to make it look a little bit better. So there's some options here for sure. Taking a look at the fuselage, we've got some awesome looking detailing here, some very fine recessed rivets. We also have a smooth texture surface for the wood areas and a little bit of some overdone ribbing detail for the ailerons and for the rudder. Because the MiG was made up of a couple of different material types, we'll have a potential to add in a couple of different types of weathering. So that should be interesting to play around with and see what we can do. We have very, very strong detailing there for any of the fabric covered surfaces. It's actually a little bit too prominent, but I don't really want to do anything about it. So we're just going to leave it and we're going to move on from there. Maybe it'll tone down a bit with some paint and primer on it. You never know. Now, speaking of paint, we're going to be using this set right here by Vallejo. This is early war Russian camo. And I honestly am not a huge fan of Vallejo these days. But as you can see, it's got a very wide range of colors. It's got everything that you would need for you know, different shades of blue. It's got the cockpit color as well. And then, of course, a couple of different shades of green. We're going to be doing a standard all green paint scheme here for our MIG. So we've got plenty of colors and I think we'll actually be looking pretty snazzy. It's actually a very nice set, you know, that is if you can go ahead and mix up Vallejo without having any trouble. So let's go ahead and jump into our first time lapse, guys. We have a long video ahead of us, so hopefully you guys stick around. We're going to jump into the cockpit. We're going to start doing some basic assembly. I want to add in some wires, do a little bit of work there on the seat pan, do a little bit of work on the cockpit floor. I want to add in whatever I can add in and then eventually prime everything and start doing some painting. We're going to use some flat black for the instrument consoles. 
We're going to use some of our light blue for the internal colors and do a little bit of Zenithal priming to create some shadows. So let's go ahead and jump in here, guys. Let's see what we can do. Let's start building up a MIG. It actually turned out to be a really fun little project. I picked out details with white, with red. I've got all the different dials and whatnot painted. And yeah, I'm actually pretty happy with how it's turned out. I also cut out that area right around the seat to give it a little bit of an optical illusion as if it didn't have anything there. Because originally the seat was held up by tube steel. We're going to go ahead and just go with it. That's going to be good enough because the cockpit's pretty tight in there. You're not really going to notice. We're going to go ahead and start doing a little bit more detail painting though. So let's jump back into the time lapse. I want to start doing some painting on the seat. I want to add in some of our seat belts. I want to start getting that all nicely installed and get the cockpit squared away. Get everything hooked into the fuselage. And then I'm hoping to come back and show you guys a beautiful looking cockpit. So let's go ahead and jump in there, guys. Let's see what we can do. Let's keep pushing on.
And we are back. This is the cockpit in its final finished form. As you can see, we've got all the different dials. We've got all of the panel line accents added in to give a little bit of depth. I like the color scheme so far. We have to do a little bit of touch up paint here on the back of the seat to go ahead and blend that in and to go ahead and paint that rear shelf for all the radio equipment. But we'll do that off camera. Not that big of a deal. Added in some seat belts, added in some homemade clasps. And of course, I added in some charging handles for those guns up in the very front of the instrument panel. So overall, a really fun build, super easy to detail and actually really nice fit. So moving forward here, guys, I'm going to go ahead and do a little work here on the rear radio deck. Now, the actual White 17 didn't have any radio equipment installed, but it did have that front aerial mast. I'm going to go ahead and put the radio equipment in there anyway because I like the look of something busy back right behind the pilot. So we're going to add in wires. We're going to add in some of the details there, and we're going to eventually paint everything with some different colors. So this should be a fun area to detail. I've gone ahead and drilled a couple of holes through the faces here on the different radio dials and equipment. So far so good. We're going to add in a couple of our 0.3 millimeter solder wires and we're going to drape them around and try to make them look a little bit more organic and drop them down behind the seat, tuck them away. We're not going to see where they terminate to give you an idea there's something going on back there. We're also going to go ahead and drill a couple of holes through the back bulkhead. I want to go ahead and string in a few more 0.3 millimeter solder wires just to give even more life and interest to this particular area. This area is very visible beneath the canopy, so I want to do what I can do to make it look a little bit better. Spice it up a little bit. Now moving on here, let's go ahead and do a little bit of detail painting here on the radio equipment. And I'm going to go ahead and paint these in a green color. This is the Russian green, very typical color here for Russian equipment. I also did a little bit of color callouts here on the inside of the cockpit as well to give it a little bit more color variation. But we're going to go ahead and hit all the radio equipment into that nice Russian green as my references do state. And then we'll come on back and hopefully we'll be able to close up the fuselage and get on with it. So with the radio equipment all nicely painted and we've got our wires hooked in there, all the nice details are popping. I love it. We're going to go ahead and start gluing together the fuselage and make sure we can get this thing ready to go ahead and install into the wings because that is going to be an area that I really want to make sure I get that nice and secure because there is a potential for some gaps right around the wing root. So let's go ahead and just tack things in with a little bit of super glue and of course some accelerator just to make sure it instantly bonds and we can go ahead and move on to the wings. Now the wings are another area where I want to do a little bit of work. For example, I'm going to go ahead and plug the openings here for the rocket pods. I'm not going to put those on. I'm also going to go ahead and add a little bit of detail into the wheel welds. If I look at the actual wheel wells from reference pictures and from other things I found online, we should have a couple of extra bits of detail in there. Now, the wheel wells weren't necessarily as busy as some of the other aircraft I have built. They do have a little bit of some detail that kind of pops out at you. For example, we have some ducting that comes up through the very corners of the landing gear base from the front leading edge intakes. That has to be added in. We're going to add that in. We're going to scratch build it out of some basic styrene, just some sprue. And we actually pulled this out of some old bandages die models that we made. Once I get this kind of lined up and nicely sanded down and sliced up, we can drop it right in there. We can check it out, see how the fit is. And then we have to go ahead and try to reproduce that for the other side. That's going to be a little tricky. I doubt I'm going to get it exactly perfect, but let's go ahead and check it out. Drop it right into the corner here and you get a little bit of an idea. So something a little bit like that. We need to make one more. We can glue it together and I think we can move on to some other areas. For example, we do have to also add in some actuators for our inner gear bay doors. For some odd reason, this kit does not actually have any and they do have some there in real life. So I wanna go ahead and add in some of my own making. What I've done is I've gone through most of my spares box. I found a couple of antennas that I can go ahead and just kind of slice off and rework to make them look a little bit more like an actuator. Then we can glue those in and we should have a little bit of extra detail in there to give a little bit of life to that area. As you can see, this is kind of what I've planned here. I went ahead and trimmed down one of these antennas and this is right about where I want it. So we're gonna glue this in leave it nicely tacked up and we're going to repeat the same thing for the other side. We are not going to install the inner gear bay doors just yet because I want to leave those off for now so I can come back and paint, do a little bit of weathering, but at least we'll know exactly where to put these so when we do install those gear bay doors, we can drop them right into place and push those actuators to touch the door. Should be pretty easy. One more piece of equipment I want to add into the wheel wells, and that is a round cylindrical object. I don't know really what it does, but we've got wires coming out of it and it sits right in front of the landing gear. So I found a couple of extra spare parts. We're going to go ahead and drop them right in here and we're going to glue it down and then we can string in some wires. As you can see, I've drilled one hole off camera into the side of the wheel bay. That's going to act for a 1.3 millimeter solder wire. We're going to draw that in. We're going to wrap it around and kind of tuck it underneath the small cylinder. And that's as close as we can get this wheel well to look like the original deal. So a couple of drops of our Mr. Cement S will get that nicely locked into place. 
And let's go ahead and move on to the leading edges. Like a lot of Soviet aircraft of this era, we have leading edge intakes. And they sit right there at the wing root, and they are very prominent. Now what we do not have on the inside of these intakes are any sort of mesh. Using our leather punch, we're going to go ahead and score an oval shape to this one piece. We're going to cut it out using some scissors because this is just very soft brass, so it's not a problem. And then we're going to glue that down to the back side of those intakes right there. I've already drilled out the back into that, so all we need to do is drop these right into place and we're good to go. But let's go ahead and jump back into our time lapse. We're going to push on with the wings. I want to get those all nicely put together and attach them to the fuselage. And I want to get everything ready for priming and painting. We're going to go ahead and prime with our usual 50-50 mix of Mr. Surfacer and our leveling thinner. And then I want to come in and do some painting with my Vallejo paint set. So let's go ahead and get back in there, guys. we got a lot more to do. Let's push on.
All right, so as you can see, we have our Vallejo colors all nicely applied. We went with that very nice Russian green, and we've got that really awesome Russian blue at the bottom there, so we are ready to apply our black nose. We're going to be using some NATO black for that because I think the flat black is just way too dark, so I think the NATO black adds a little bit of a wear effect to the area, and that's perfect. We don't want anything too stark. So I think we're going to jump back in there, guys. So far, so good. This model kit is coming together. I'm absolutely loving it. We're going to get back in there. We're going to make our final push for our assembly. We've got to get that gloss coat on there, get all the fidgety parts hooked in. I want to get those decals on, add in our gloss top coat. I want to weather it down with a couple of different techniques, some oil dot filters, as well as some panel line accents. And then I want to go ahead and get all the fine details installed, hit it with a matte coat, grab our aerials, and then we should be done with our MiG-3. So back in there, guys, one last push. Let's get our MiG all finished up.
All right, everybody, we are back. And I got to tell you, I had so much fun with this model. I initially came into this model thinking, oh, you know what? It's going to be a little bit of some trouble. Maybe I have some fit issues. But honestly, no, I did not. This was a great little model to build. Tried a couple of new things. Some of it worked. Some of it didn't. But I'm actually very happy with what we've come up with. So let me go ahead and show you guys our finished product. Here it is, the 148 scale Trumpeter MiG-3 early version. And I am super happy with how it's turned out. Super, super simple. I tried to keep those colors a little different there on the metal parts as opposed to the wooden parts of the aircraft. It looks a little bit better, I think, in person than it does on camera. But there is a slight difference between the wing panels. I did a lot of work there in the cockpit, adding in details and wires and whatnot. I also did a ton of work there in the wheel well area, adding in actuators and a little bit more detail. Let's zoom in here and show you some of the details. This model was a lot of fun. I can't stress that enough, guys. If you like Soviet aircraft, check out the MiG-3. I'm not really sure it shows up too much on camera, but the outer panels are supposed to be a little darker than the metal inner panels. It's a bit more noticeable in person, but I think you can kind of see it in different lights. So this kit was wonderful for adding an extra detail. I added a ton of detail there in the cockpit, as well as the wheel bays. And that really didn't take that much time and it adds a whole lot of interest there. So I'm really happy with that. That being said, I did have some issue with the flaps. They didn't really want to drop into place. And so there's a large gap at the very front of those flaps. And we are actually missing a decal. This little black stripe right here wasn't offered in the decal set. So I had to source that from another model because I do see that on a lot of references. So you can see the cockpit is actually pretty detailed. It's not perfect, mind you, but it does add some interest and some life to it through wires and seat belts. There is some discrepancy regarding the instrument panel. I could have gone with the light blue, but I decided to go black with this one because that's what most of my references showed. I think you could do either one. And aside from adding in all the wires and whatnot there for the cockpit, I did end up adding in my homemade seat belts. Just added to me a tape and some wire. I think that actually looks pretty good. They're not perfect and they're not 100% accurate, but I think they're pretty passable, so I'm happy with it. Now, the wheel bays are a little lackluster, but again, 20, 30 minutes to add in some extra details really brought those to life. So I got to say, I am super happy with how this kit has turned out. But that is it for our very first build here on One and Done. Hope you guys enjoyed the series. I'm going to try to do a bit more of these now and then because I think it's a nice break from the episodic builds. Not everybody wants to sit down and watch one episode per week. Some people just kind of want to sit down and binge the whole thing. And this actually eliminates that. You can just sit down and watch the entire model in one sitting and I think it's actually kind of cool. I'm going to go ahead and put some pictures up on Instagram and I'm going to drop this in the display case. So until our next episode guys you know the drill go out there get yourself some bench time have some fun build something cool and we'll see you back here on the next episode of Ben Builds for more modeling adventures. Thanks so much for watching guys take care of yourselves and we'll see you soon.